Now, a quiet afternoon at work for staff of the KGT branch of the Ghana Commercial Bank turned into a bloody nightmare after an unnamed young man launched a violent attack on them. The bank was immediately closed down after the incident. We understand that the young man was actually attacking staff of the bank. Well, now, this happened yesterday. Let's get a quick update on the situation at the bank now. Erasta Sasari Donko has been following the incident. He's joined me over the telephone. Good morning, Erastus. Good morning. Uh, do, do, do we know whether or not bank operations uh, have resumed this morning? Yes, uh, it resumed uh, two hours after the incident. Uh, the bank had to be closed down for... Uh, them to be able to clean the blood that uh, had been smeared in the hall. And uh, this blood was coming from the suspect because it was seen uh, various wounds. Uh, while using his fist to crack uh, the doors, the glass doors over there. So the, the glass doors this morning, they have been replaced. Uh, banking activities uh, have resumed. It's a place and um, continuing. And additionally, uh, they have still their security measures, so we have uh, a more security detail in there. Hello, Erastus. Erastus. Well, I think we lost Erastus there. We'll raise him over the telephone again and get more on this. But uh, well, most importantly, uh, bank operations have resumed uh, amidst heavy security on the bank's premise. We'll get into understanding why this man launched the attack a day after, uh, after the incident at the Ghana Commercial Branch in Kejitia. Uh, while we put an effort to raise Erastus back over the telephone, let's talk about health care. And access to quality health care is problematic for residents of Goviafa, Toji, a farming community in the Afaja to South District of the Volta region. With a population of over 50,000 residents in Goviafa, Toji have to travel long distances to access health care. The deplorable nature of the roads make it difficult for motorists to travel to and from the town. Here's a report by correspondent Fred Kwame Asari. In South Goviepa, Toji, either walk or carry patients on motorbikes from the community to a health center in the next community. Mankrado of Goviepa, Toji, Togbi Go Prekese, narrates the history of healthcare delivery in the town and laments how residents have difficulties in accessing healthcare, especially pregnant women and lactating mothers. We used to have a health center which was provided by World Vision. But due to low attendance then, the nurse was transferred. The health center was closed down after the nurse left. For some years now, we don't have a health center. The Korean Foundation for International Health Care, Kofi, has put up a structure for the community which has been rehabilitated to house a CHIPS compound. However, the facility is yet to be furnished with health equipment. There are about 15 health centers across the district which are all in deplorable states and lack basic equipment. The erratic power supply has also caused damage to some of the refrigerators used to store vaccines and other drugs. However, Kofi has provided about 140,000 Ghana cities to help rehabilitate health centers and also build capacity of health professionals in the district. Five health centers have been rehabilitated so far. Part of the money was also used to construct a maternity unit attached with a weighing shed at Golokwati. The Afaja to South Director of Health Services, Dr. George Nako, acknowledged Kofi's intervention has been very helpful in improving access to health care and reducing maternal mortality in the district. Though the health sector in the district has staffing challenges, the DCE, Angela Alawute, noted that health accessibility in the district had improved from 30% to 50% and was expectant of an increase by close of 2015. She added that though inflow of internally generated fund is low, the Assembly would solicit funding elsewhere to help enhance health care delivery. The grant came with some facilities, uh, like equipment, like the bed, delivery bed, normal beds, 
And so what we have decided to do is to provide the basics, um, like um, the tables, the chairs, uh, for the staff to, to use. Kofi also presented a tricycle ambulance and four motorcycles to the Afajato Health Directorate. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Joy News. The Ministry of Interior, Mark, the Minister of the Interior, rather, Mark Wayungo, has appealed for more international support to supplement government's efforts to bring relief to the about 52,000 persons affected by the recent floods that ravaged parts of Accra. Now, several organizations since the tra tragedy struck two weeks ago have donated generously to the victims. Addressing newsmen in Accra, the minister said relief efforts will be well coordinated to ensure the aid that comes in gets to the intended beneficiaries. Many organizations and individuals have donated money, food, clothes, mattresses and toiletries to support victims since the twin disasters occurred two weeks ago. The relief efforts have, however, lacked coordination. Whilst the National Disaster Management Organization has been in charge of administering government handouts, several other organizations have also been mobilizing assistance for the victims. But the Interior Minister says coordination of the efforts is crucial. People might even get double, tri triple and that kind of thing. So it's good to coordinate the thing and you ensure that at least everybody is given something. And it's only through coordination that this can be done. So I will uh, follow this very closely with Madmo. I'll ensure that they do the coordination so that uh, it will be properly done. I'll try and call Nadmo, find out how much they have at present, because money keeps coming in. And besides, you're talking about coordination. It's not all the money that is going to Nadmo. Uh -huh. Some of it is also going to other uh, organizations. And that's why we said there is the need for us to coordinate so that at the end of the day, we'll get to know how much has been contributed to the relief effort. Meanwhile, the International Hospital Group Limited, contractors of the Police Hospital Redevelopment Project, has donated 100,000 cedars to government relief fund. The money will help the committee to put, to put smiles on the faces of those victims. It will help address some of their problems. But I also use the opportunity to appeal to international businesses operating in Ghana to also emulate the gesture of the International Hospital Group as part of their social corporate responsibility. A five-member committee tasked to investigate the June 3 Goyle filling station explosion has until the end of the month to present its findings. It is not clear how the explosion occurred, but the prevailing theory is that fuel carried off by the flood waters from the underground fuel storage tanks at the filling station at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle was ignited by fire several hundred meters away. Let's do some business news when we come back. Don't go away.